Hello, I'm Joseph, and this is the Anycubic Cobra Go, specifically an unrepaired Anycubic Cobra Go. Now, if you're looking at unrepaired printers off eBay, uh, this is going to be a little bit of a guide of things to expect, uh, and then some specifics to the Cobra Go. Uh, so the first thing is that you have to understand that with the unrepaired section for 3D printers is that they're usually marked as used, uh, not, and not for parts. That's an important understanding because when you buy something that is used technically by ebay's terms it needs to actually function so if you get something that's like maybe missing print head or a screen or whatever else you have every uh opportunity to return the 3d printer even though the vendor will most likely want you to reach out to them because they can probably just send you the print head or the screen uh, the idea here is that you would do the due diligence to fix the printer um, but if there's a part missing, technically you can just return it. Um, with the Go and like the Ender 3s, it's more like a kit. There's a lot more to put together. There's a lot more that you can technically get wrong. So reach out to the vendors. Uh, when I bought these like uh, six months ago versus now, uh, the vendor just shipped it. Now the vendors may actually reach out to you and not let you buy these after you've already confirmed the purchase and sent the money. Um, in that they want to make sure that you understand this is an unrepaired printer. Uh, what that means is that this is usually a returned unit. This is uh, something maybe partially damaged that you could fix or someone didn't, just didn't know how to put it together. Um, some of these are completely brand new in the box. Some of them are used um, and some of them are actually damaged. So I'm going to go through this one specifically that I just set up and then we'll talk about a couple of the others that I bought in the past on some of the issues that I've had right here. So uh, this one here, like I said, is the Andy Huber Cobra Go. It's $65, so you save quite a bit of money here. Um, but with the Cobra Go series, specifically in the Cobra Neo, uh, I do recommend at least getting some, some springs with wheels or some silicone bushings. That's because these stock bushings, um, you're, you're basically getting like the bottom of the barrel for these things. I'm assuming the seller's actually putting pieces together that look like they might work and then selling it to you. Um, this, these are not always from the same box that was maybe pre-assembled and disassembled, but yeah, it just, these specifically have terrible bed, um, uh, leveling systems. And because they are fixed plastic bushings, uh, unfortunately you don't have any way to adjust it. So, so like this one here was actually the worst <laughs> level bed I've had at all. And I actually, you couldn't even print this size of the bed here. I had one that was just way too close and one that was way too far. And because they are fixed, you can't just tighten or loosen the screws. Uh, so again, I had to apply some silicone bushings here to be able to at least dynamically change the up and down positions of, of the four points here. So that's just that. Okay, back to the actual printer. Um, when I got this, this was obviously already used. It was pre-assembled. Um, a problem with these like pre-assembled things is one, you may or may not get tools. Two, you're gonna get the screws all in one bag. So you gotta figure out where the screws go. Another um, problem is because these are shipped to you, uh, sometimes they are not put back as they should be or disassembled completely. And so you may get things where you have like visual um, marring or scratches. This is fine. It, the, you know, the metal is going to get scratched. As long as it's not scratched on where the V-slot or the palm wheels go, uh, you know, where the inside of the metal is at, you're good to go. But when you get that actual like deep scratches here, that may affect your print quality. So that's something to look out for. If you, if, you, if you get those, reach out to the vendor, they may be able to send you a replacement for the actual um, like metal extrusions. Uh, one thing that was specific to this printer that I, I got was that the, um, the little indicator here, the Z uh, offset uh, was actually physically bent to the right, all the way to the right. I, w I did go ahead and bend it back, back, but you can see that the uh, powder coating did come off a little bit. In terms of bending it back but it is just a visual artifact it still works as intended uh, another item that i ran into was that the extruder gear uh, was actually sunken down all the way and that meant i had to remove the plastic here to be able to get to it and then when i flipped it upside down to make sure that the grub screws were actually on the top this way if it does fall back down again i have quick access to it i don't have to you know disassemble this whole thing again uh, I put the grub screws incorrectly because there is a solid um, bit, flat bit of metal here 
uh, and as there's two grub screws, one is longer than the other. So if you put one in the wrong place, you could have this um, kind of this clicking in place, trying to uh, the grub screw would actually be hitting against this plastic here. So that was just one little quick fix that I had to do. Another was actually a QA issue with this printer. Uh, the actual concentric nut. That's, that's the thing that you tighten and loosen to the side here. Uh, this was installed in reverse. So uh, whenever you turn this, the X gantry just never tightened up. It was just completely loose all the time. So all I had to do was unscrew the little nylon nut back here, take off the palm wheel, reverse this or flip it upside down, and then you know reinstall it. It worked great. I have a similar issue with the, uh, the wheels at the bottom of the bed here. Well, when you turn the actual concentric nut, the, the, the nylon nut back here was actually turning as well. So I just took a socket wrench, tightened it up, and then I was able to tighten the bed as well. That's why I, I, I assume these two things or all these little things are not uh, things that all happened with one person. I'm assuming these were different bits uh, of problem areas for different customers. And so they just got rebundled together to be given to me uh, to figure out what's wrong with it. Uh, another issue I had was that these wires were already pre, um, pre-assembled or not pre simple, but like already plugged in. And while this is Y down there, there's actually used to say X. So someone had taken the wire that goes to the uh, X motor that's right there and plugged into the Y motor. Uh, so if you turned it on, you try to move the X gantry or the Y gantry, it would move the, uh, the Z uh, up and down. So that was just another thing. Uh, there is some deep scratches in the plastic here probably just another artifact of shipping it because like i said they're just chucking this back into the box and sending it to you it's not always there uh the the bracket to the screen was installed reverse they didn't completely disassemble this so when i went to go put this on the screen was like upside down or back going backwards i just had to take off the, the bracket in the back here and reassemble it another issue with the bed was the uh, wiring back here um, this was kind of folded to the right. So every time it went to home to the back here, it would actually touch the back indicator of the Y stopper and prematurely home the Y axis. So when the bed move, went to move forward, it would crash into the front. So what I did was just take off the uh, little clip here and put some zip ties just to move the cable to the left. This way when it does go all the way back, it's not folding over and hitting the Y limiter. I recommend doing this anyways because specific to the Anacubic Cobra Go and Neo, they have a very high degree uh, bend radius at the back here. Uh, I do prints where uh, I do a full like bed pr of prints and it, this thing's going back and forth for you know two, three days uh, at a time. And I've already had one of them fail where the wire frayed at the bend radius, uh, even with the wire strain there. So it just doesn't matter. They don't give you a long enough cord for this printer specifically and the Neo to prevent that. Um, beyond that, uh, when I had everything assembled, I had some weird things happening. So this is just like a, a little pre-check, a pre-flight check. When I went to pull the filament out, I noticed that there was a very large bulge um, in the filament path at the end where the nozzle's at. Um, this was also really, really bent. So I went ahead and just replaced this with my own PTF E tube. This is a like clear transparent mode, uh, but it's the same PTF tube that you would get for these printers anyways. Um, after I started to print, uh, another problem I ran into was I was getting these weird um, kind of uh, like missing steps here. So went in doubt, nozzled it out. I just replaced the nozzle that helped it. Uh, but then I had some serious issues with uh, the Y stepper motor or the Y access kind of having all these skips. Um, I went to go ahead and tighten and loosen uh, as much as I can with these belts. This belt was apparently tightened to the max. Someone had turned this knob all the way uh, and it was completely tightened. So that was one of the reasons. But as I you know, continue to print like this here, um, it continued to shift no matter what I did. No matter what I tighten or loosen, the shifting just never stopped. It actually came out to be something very stupid because while this didn't come with any um, tooling, it also didn't come with an SD card reader. So that's two things. Um, but it came with an SD card. I kept putting different things on there, printing different things. I did calibration cubes that would still skip and have all these like weird artifacts. And that came down to the fact that the SD card was actually bad. It wouldn't be able to write to it all the time. And when you have these power loss printers, which means that if you were unplug it and replug it back in, you can resume, it writes to the SD card. And if the SD card is bad, what happens, the X answer would go up. And then when it goes to fails to write, it'll just drop down. 
uh, but because whatever you're printing will continue to support it, it'll basically act like the Y axis is shifting. So all I did was just swap out the SD card with my own and it worked just fine. So all these things are things that are not very easy to diagnose. This, that took me hours and hours to figure out because I'm doing all these prints, just trying to figure out the, the correct tension. Maybe I'm doing something wrong or configurations and that was it. The last thing uh, that I had to do was specific to the Cobra Go and Neo, which these are set to under extrude. When you hit certain edges here, uh, you're not gonna be able to see, see this specifically, but you get this like weird um, stippling from when it gets to the next layer. And that's because it's just, it's under extruding. So I changed this from 103 for the extruder to 108. Unfortunately, this screen here does not allow you to change the E-steps. So I had to connect this to a laptop, go to prompter face and do the calibration where you uh, like spit out hundred meters or 100 millimeters measure it uh, I calculate the e-step so it was from 103 to 108 it was slightly over extruding but i'd rather over extrude by a little bit than under extrude and then the um i did a calibration cube over and over and over uh, but basically it's you know these things with the x y and z and the y or the um, the z height was a little off so i moved it from 400 steps to 401 e-steps and that made my calibration cube nice and fit after all that it's good to go i can use this now there was no, nothing technically broken or wrong there's things that are installed incorrectly with some damaged parts that you could fix now another printer that i've had was the anacubic cobra neo the tracing underneath the bed here was actually scratched so bad that it prevented the head the, the bed from heating up and i would get a screen error so all i had to do was um, scratch out the tracing at the bottom of this bed here and re-solder in a copper tape um, that let me kind of, you know, continue to use it and it works just fine. I've used it for uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of worth of prints and it's not been an issue here. Another one that I got of these of the Cobra Go was that it was missing like a screw here. So I went and replaced that. Um, others were like just partially pre-assembled. One of them was this completely brand new in the box. Uh, so your mileage would definitely vary, but you may have to do things. Uh, another one I got where the uh, Z stepper motor was just so um, bad that I had to replace it. Um, I had to replace it with my own motor and I, maybe it's something I could reach out to the vendor with, but the amount of time I would take to contact them, reach, you know, go back and forth. I've already had stepper motors, um, kind of on hand. The catch with these stepper motors is that they don't tell you the wiring guide. So you got to do like a little jumper cable sat in, uh, set it up to the motherboard, <laughs> keep flipping the wires around before you can figure out which wires go to what. And then, um, these little pins uh, back here for these that you have, you go to the motherboard, you, you know, you take out one of the pins and you just like flip it around and stuff like that. It's not a, it's not a big deal, but it's a very annoying thing if you don't know about what you should be doing for these 3D printers. So is it something I recommend someone who wants to save a buck and is just getting into 3D printing? No, not at all. You should know about 3D printers if you're going to the unrepaired section of this, e you know, of eBay for, for 3D printers. But uh, if you have the patience, if you're willing to spend maybe hours or days diagnosing an issue, it'll teach you about 3D printers in a process. Um, and you can get the, you can get some really good decent printers. The Anticubic Cobra Go and Neo are great starting points because they are cheaper than the Ender 3 and do get the bed leveling. But like I said, these specifically don't have the best bed leveling systems. And so you do want to have a way to replace it because these are not using the stock anymore. And all I did for the bed leveling process was take um, something like this, uh, a wide print. And as it's printing, I would pause it. Um, lift this up and just screw down or unscrew it depending on what side is a little too low and then when I got something decent like this here where it's you know fairly good first layer I, that's it that's all I need to do I can do one more bed level just to just check to make sure it's still consistent and continue to print that way and uh, yeah so you can definitely save a buck in that this was 65 the lowest I got this before was around 61 and then I got the uh, Anycubic Cobra Neo for around uh, 75 now you can get these uh, for a little bit more, but you can also get the Ender 3s. Uh, again, it's, it's up to you whether you want to take this dive down. Do you know you are taking some risk? They are expecting you to do some due diligence in understanding what the problem is for some of these parts. Like I said, I don't think someone's going to immediately know this concentric nut is uh, needing to be flipped or reversed, or maybe the nylon nut needs to be tightened or any of this other stuff. So if you don't know anything about 3D printers, uh, it's going to be a really big struggle for you.